Hey guys, welcome back to the third video of the webcast reception series and today we'll be talking about the normalization and how you can exploit it for webcast reception. First, let's understand the normalization by the origin server, which is the actual backend server. So in this case, you are testing if the server changes or interprets weird looking paths, which I talked about in my previous video as well, like how some parameters or some encoded uh, special characters can cause the server to behave in a different way. So similar to that, let's say you have an endpoint like slash profile. So you will try changing it to slash AAA slash dot dot percent to F profile. So here you're doing is you're adding an arbitrary directory before the actual end. Then you're adding some path traversal payloads along with the forward slash encoded form, which is percent to F. Now you send this request and so if the response still gives you the real profile info, it means that the server cleaned up the path and treated it like the original slash profile. But if it gives you an error like 404 not found, it means the server did not clean it up and just saw a weird broken path. So this is the thing that you can analyze first. Now let's talk about how the cache server normalizes it like a CDN or proxy. In this case, you are testing if the cache treats tricky paths as same or different. This tells you how it decides what to store and serve. So to test for it, you have to first look for static files like images, JavaScript files, or CSS files that are cached. Once you find such request, take them into repeater. Let's say you have slash assets slash JS slash stock check dot JS. So it's just checking the stock present for a particular product as the JavaScript file for it. Now you try sending a modified path like uh, slash AA slash dot dot uh, again the traversal payload slash assets and the rest of the original path. Now you're going to send this request and if the response is not cached anymore, that means the cache did not clean up the path. But if it's still cached, the cache probably normalized the path to the real one. Keeping this in mind, let's move on to the lab. Okay, here I have this lab of exploiting origin server normalization for webcast reception. So let's go to my account and log in with our old credential. And I have my bar suit running over here. So in the HTTP history, let's find out the my account endpoint. And in the response, we can see that we have the API key here. So of course, when we are looking for web cache reception vulnerability, we want to find a request that is giving us a response that contains sensitive information. So let's send this to repeater and start testing for some weirdness. For example, by adding some kind of delimiters or some characters that might give us a different response. But let's see what kind of header we are getting in the response. Over here, there is no sign of caching because we are not seeing any a thing like uh, x cache hit or x cache miss, but we do see the cache control header over here. Let's try something like the classic payload we tried in the previous lab that worked. Let's try it again. And again, we are getting the same response, but we don't see any cache hit header. It's very likely not working. So let's try something like. So let's send this request. And this time it says 404 not found. Means some kind of path normalization is happening here. And the server or the caching server is ignoring this thing and giving us 404 because this doesn't exist in the first place. So we have to find some other kind of delimiter to exploit this. Let's go back to the HTTP history. And let's look at some other requests. One thing we can notice here is that we have this directory resource. We see a lot of directory resource, then lab header, images, blog, or tracking.js. So under the resources directory, we have different kind of images, JS, SVG files, or CSS file, whatever. And in the response, we can also see that it says X cache, min some kind of caching is happening over here. 
let's pick up a particular resource. Let's say this one and send this to repeater. Send this again and it says X cache miss. Let's send this once again. And it says X cache hit means it's getting cached. Let's try the same thing over here again. Let's remove this and let's just add an arbitrary value. And again, it says not found, but we also see the header that is X cache miss. Let's resend this and it says X cache hit. So even though this does not exist, but caching is happening here for this path. So based on this, we can analyze that, that there is a particular rule that caches this static directory that is the resource directory. So it's caching everything for this particular directory. Means as long as this particular directory is present in the URL, it will get cached. But if it's not, then it will give us 404, just like it was giving us in this particular request. So you can try exploiting by keeping that information in mind. In the previous request, remove this particular delimiter. And now we are going to add resources directory. So first we will say resources slash dot dot slash the previous payload that we tried earlier percent to f which is basically forward slash so it will resolve to slash resource slash my account and since it is caching everything that comes under the resource directory which is the analysis it should be caching the information for the my account request as well let's try sending this info to the server and we are getting a response and in the response we can see the api key as well and we can also see the header that says x cache miss which we were not seeing before it means that the caching server is not ignoring this request neither it's normalizing it it is accepting it as a legit request or a legit path and it's giving us this response based on the caching rule so now we can exploit this to get the api key for the victim as well so let's use a unique cache key in this case whatever you're gonna add after the resource is gonna get cached so now you can use other delimiters as well such as question marks so now i'm going to um use this a equals ab.js so this is gonna get cached to yeah and it is getting cached we can see the api key again in this case let's say cd and now we have a unique url so let's copy it and go to the exploit server over here let's craft our exploit inside the script tag we are going to add window.location and then the URL. Make sure you have not used this URL for yourself. You have not cached this before. It should be a unique cache key. Store it. And then deliver the exploit to victim. Let's wait for three seconds. And now let's open up that URL in a new tab. Or you can use it in a new browser. And now we can see the API key for the user Carlos means we just exploited this particular rule in the web caching to get the key. Now we can just submit the solution and then solve the lab. I hope this makes sense, but if you're a little confused, you can watch my previous video in which I talked about delimiters and how different kind of characters and URL encodings work and how origin server and web caching server interpret them then it will make much more sense so a quick conclusion we were able to exploit web cache reception vulnerability here because of how the server was normalizing path so the server was normalizing paths in other endpoints except the resources directory so if there is any files under the resources directory it will cache it otherwise it won't that's why we use the resources directly as a payload to cache the sensitive api key in the my account endpoint
Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Let me know your views in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.